Daily Driven Exotics has been on top for a long time. But have you ever wondered, how much longer can this go on? Listen to me. Today, we're gonna talk about arguably the biggest miracle in the supercar content world, and that's the continued existence of Daily Driven Exotics. First of all, I just wanna say thanks for all the support on that Whistle and Diesel video I did. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, it just blew up. So thank you all for subscribing that are brand new. If you haven't seen that video, go check it out. I'll put it up on a card here or here, wherever YouTube puts it. If you've watched car content on YouTube, you've probably at least heard of Daily Driven Exotics. Daily Driven Exotics, or DDE, is a huge exotic supercar lifestyle channel run by Damon Fryer and Dave Coulter. They've been around now for a while. Millions of subscribers on YouTube, millions upon millions of views over the years of creating content, and arguably created the supercar lifestyle niche that they exist in now. Supercar shenanigans, builds, rallies, cop moments, it's all here. But I know, it's like, so what, Jimbo? I mean, like, we know this. Like, we know that these guys have been around for a while and all this. Like, what's the point of talking to them? Like, you just trying to get a little bit of that DVD clout? First of all, yes, I'm a whore like every other YouTuber. But second, and like the actual reason I decided to make this video is, isn't it kind of insane that they're still going? Like, just, just think about it for a second. After all the years and just the evolution of just car content on YouTube and the fact that now so much has already been done with cars in general on the platform. I mean, it's nuts that they're still going. You wanna come into the video, girl? Are you bored? Hmm? Yeah. This is Casey, everyone. Let me open this window for you, okay? Come here. Here, I'll open the window. I now have a cat on my lap. If anybody has a cat, you know how this goes. You wanna say something to everyone? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think most people realize like just how absurd it is that these guys are still going and doing things at the scale that they're doing in today's YouTube world. And the reason I wanted to call attention to this is because back when I did Savage Garage with Randy, doing that channel, producing that kind of content with just the, the frequency, with what went into it, the money and the logistics and the scheduling and all the different ancillary things that go into making, you know, essentially the brand. It is unbelievable how much of a circus it is. So having some experience in this racket and also knowing these guys personally, they're professionals, they're really great guys, and they work extremely hard to make the content that they end up providing to you. Without brown nosing too hard here, I wanted to give you my reasons. I think DDE is just way, way more impressive than you think. And it's just, it's unbelievable that we even have a channel like this on the platform. You could hate DDE. You could have whatever opinion you want of them, but I guarantee you by the end of this video, you'll at least respect them. So with that, let's just jump into it. As I've already said, automotive YouTube has gotten very saturated. There's content on everything now. Trends come and go faster than they ever have before. But something I don't think anybody could have predicted even just a few years ago, people have gotten used to YouTubers playing with expensive cars. This is normal now. And this, and this, this, and this right here. One, two, three, four Lamborghinis. Like just for reference, back in 2016, you remember JR Garage and his drive my Viper to high school at 16, buying my Ferrari at 17, and I paid for everything with lemonade stands? It all started with the lemonade stand. What? You remember all that? That was a hot topic for so long. And people made response videos, parodies. Hell, like I even got involved in the mix because I knew Jeffrey locally. What's crazy too is like, it wasn't really that long ago. 2016, I mean, just three years later, Savage Garage started. And come today, like 2023, every rich guy in his 40s going through a midlife crisis and needs a big tax write-off now has a YouTube channel. In a society of grown men walking around, talking to cameras. But getting back to content like in 2016, even 2017, crazy supercar content like it exists today didn't exist back then. So when you had people like DDE doing donuts in a wide body 458, and they're going on rallies and cop moments and doing all this crazy living it up in LA kind of stuff, of course they amassed a huge following. Like there was nothing like that before. But that's the thing though. It's not like DDE just blew up once a while back and that's why they exist today. They've continued to make content that blows up, that gets a lot of views, that makes some kind of impact or starts a trend or whatever it is. In other words, they've continued to stay relevant and be the guys for this type of content. It's one thing to get a lot of attention when you're the only person doing a particular thing. It's another thing to get a lot of attention when everyone else is doing it too. 
all we see is just the final product. You know, we see what's put on YouTube or Instagram. We don't see what goes on behind the scenes. The thing is with this YouTube content, there isn't some big budget or studio behind all of this. This is two guys who I assume have a small team around them to produce and film the videos, edit the videos, manage all the scheduling, manage all the logistics, manage all the travel, manage like money, make sure that there's enough money coming in from all this stuff. So with that, let's go down what I'm sure is still an abridged rabbit hole of all the different things that need to be kept in check at all times for running the DDE ship. First of all, these guys don't live in California. They live in Canada. Every couple weeks, they go down to LA to film some content, and then they go back home to their families. But just with all that back and forth, that creates a huge amount of things that need to be figured out. Where are the cars gonna be stored? How much is it gonna cost? Is the cost justified? What about hotels when we're in town? How much are those going to cost? How much are plane tickets gonna cost? Baggage, food, it all adds up. Doing this back and forth schedule, is this sustainable? Then there's the creation of the content when they're in town. I know this is just one example, but they build supercars. And building cars and delayed timelines go hand in hand. Maybe you'll appreciate what we did in the back. But for once. Would you... For once? Yeah. I appreciate See? everything you do when you deliver what you say you're gonna deliver on time. What if something on a car doesn't get done on time? They needed it for the video. Now they don't have a title and thumbnail. Now they have to find something else to film that day right now, because otherwise they're not gonna have an upload. They need to work with people that are reliable, they do what they say they're gonna do, and they do it in a timely manner. But not only that, it has to be done at a number that makes sense for the business. Yeah, it's cool, we got the world's only V12 twin turbo F12, but if it costs over half a million dollars to build, it's not the most profitable content idea. And that doesn't even include like the payments on these cars. Most of the time it doesn't make sense to just buy a car completely outright in cash. It makes sense to finance it. So imagine you got like 10 of these things, and you're doing work on them. You gotta pay the bills to work on each one, and then you gotta pay the note on the car, and you've got insurance for each one of these things. This shit's expensive. <laughs> and just for the hell of it, let's talk about rallies. You've got the entry fee, the travel, the car shipping, or the car rentals. And then once you're on it, you've gotta hope enough interesting shit happens on the rally to make videos on. But then there's the editing. Three to four uploads a week of action-packed and highly edited videos. Now, these aren't videos you can just turn around in a couple hours. Like, they take time. Back when I was editing Savage Garage videos, I mean, each video took anywhere between four to even 12 hours, depending on how much footage there was to go through, how much editing was required for whatever kind of video we were trying to make. So whoever their editor is needs to be on point, but also not get burnt out. And that's just the main channel uploads. Like they've also got a second channel for just their stories that they post and not much editing goes into those. It's pretty easy to upload, but someone still has to export the video. Someone still has to do the title, the thumbnails, the description, the tags. Then of course, brand deals. Time again to thank today's sponsor, Rage Shadow Legends. This video is sponsored by Rockform. Go to massgate.com right now and get free. I will say most of the time they're pretty easy to put together once the back and forth with the brand or the agency is done via email and a rate is agreed upon you get the prompt or the read that they give you for everything they want you to say you get your coupon code like all that stuff once that's done you do the filming the editing but then it has to be sent back to the brand or the agency for approval they need to take a look at it before it goes live in your video all that back and forth over email it takes time and we're not done yet how about their merch I can only assume it's pretty hands-off for Damon and Dave. What I'm trying to say is they're not the ones placing the orders for how many t-shirts and how many sweatshirts and how many hats and all that stuff. They're not going back and forth with production about materials and colors and different design revisions and X, Y, and Z. Someone on their team or multiple people on their team are doing that for them. But inside of any good merchandise operation, there's the running of the website, there's the product photos, the product videos that end up going on Instagram and on Snapchat. There's the coming up with new concepts and new ideas ideas for different drops, the online ads for the merchandise, all of that stuff. Like someone's got to do it. I know they have a manager and I'm sure that helps out a lot with all the back and forth and the running of this DDE content machine. But that's one more person you've got to put on payroll. And if you want a good one, they're not cheap. And with the crazy schedule that Damon and Dave have, he must get put through the ringer. Like for one, just making sure everybody stays on point. Development of like new different revenue streams to keep money coming into this house. Dealing with and bringing in new sponsorships, new collaborations collaborations, creating pitch decks and treatments for the sponsorships, collaborations, taking the different meetings for all this stuff, and just simple things like making sure all the cars are registered and insured and have the proper insurance for what they're doing. How about payroll for everyone? Cash flow. One of the lovely things about dealing with a lot of these big agencies that represent people like Simply Safe or Bespoke Post or any of these other big name sponsors that you've seen in videos, 
they take forever to pay the influencers. It's annoying, but they're the ones holding the bag and offering money. But some of these agencies only pay on like a net 30 or even like a net 60 sometimes so they can evaluate the results of the integration. So it takes a while to get paid for some of these things, but managing the money coming in and out of the account to make sure that they can pay the obscene amount of overhead that I'm sure that these guys have, it's nuts. And as I said earlier, Damon and Dave are only in town for a couple weeks. So all the content that they film between the store and the YouTube videos and all this stuff, it all needs to get posted in a way so it feels consistent throughout the entire month. Just think for a second. Have you ever noticed that DDE is only in town for a couple weeks out of each month? I bet not. You would think every day they're in LA filming content for the channel. Oh, and just by the way, did I mention they've been running shit like this for years successfully? It is fucking wild. I know implying for like even a minute that playing with supercars for a living would be very taxing, it's a little ridiculous. But when it comes to creating the kind of content the DDE makes, while it is a lot of fun, it can be very draining. We're gonna get on our LA vibes tonight, guys. Hang on. Constantly putting on the face, regardless of how you feel or how tired you are, it's a lot. Another episode of Daily Doing Exotics. So either Damon and Dave, along with everyone else around them, are the best actors ever, or, they still enjoy what they're doing. Especially when downloading the videos that I used for this video, I caught myself smiling a lot while watching their videos. The chemistry between everyone is fantastic. Sure, I can tell that some of their enthusiasm for certain things is played up for the camera, but the smiles and emotions are genuine. It's clear these guys are having a blast. Now don't get me wrong, making a whole bunch of money, filming content, and being successful at it, it can be fun no matter what the content is. But if I need to give one more intro with a camera like this going, hey guys, what's going on? Back to the channel, I'll freaking go, ah! I'll just implode, like I can't do it anymore. But the thing is like, I'm young still. I'm not supposed to be burnt out doing stuff like this. Damon and Dave are in their 40s and they are running around LA like Casey Neistat did in New York in 2016. This will be the rowdy portion of today's vlog. Yes, the shop setup's important. The more important is being their buddies, even when you're 40. <laughs> I can't believe these guys aren't burnt out yet. And I'm not saying this like everyone's waiting for it or something. I'm just saying like you do this stuff every day long enough. At some point, the will to go like this all the time about every Thing, it does get tiring. The only way you keep something like this going is if you love it, like you truly live and breathe it. And they have to, because even if they want it to take a break from everything that they're doing, everything in the meantime stops. They need to film so their editors can edit, so then this entire machine keeps going so that they can pay bills. Proof, we pay our bills. Down payment on SVJ, $299,000. I'm eating craft dinner tonight. <laughs> if they take a break, even if it's a short one, everything gets held up. And that's a huge cross to bear 365 days a year. And sure, you could just say, well, that's part of being a business owner. That's what you signed up for. But with YouTube, it's a bit different. Unlike a traditional brick and mortar business, or even now online when you're selling a good or service, with YouTube, you are the good and service. You can't delegate or automate you. The filming, the content ideas, even sometimes the editing, it's all very hands-on. Everything collapses without the creator, and DDE is no exception. How these two have been able to keep vlogging after all these years successfully while still growing and coming up with new stuff to do and still having a home life and some of their sanity left and clearly still have fun doing it is completely beyond me. When it comes to the automotive YouTube cinematic universe, Daily Driven Exogs has been one of the biggest names in the space for a very long time. And I truly feel that it is warranted. Whether or not you like watching their content, and I do agree that, you know, it's not for everybody. But one thing I think we all can acknowledge is the content they put out there would not exist without them. Nobody else makes content like them, and there's a reason for that. It's hard, it takes a lot of time, it's difficult, it's risky even, but that's why they are where they are today and why so many creators look to them as the standard for supercar content. And with the amount of content they continue to put out, the fact that they continue to push the envelope of what supercar content is, that I think is something we can all respect. So with all that folks, I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments below what you thought and who you'd like to see me do a video on in the future. Subscribe if you haven't already, like the video even, helps the algorithm on YouTube, and I'll see you guys in the next one.